Hey guys, and uh, welcome to another episode of the Fad Show. Uh, so on today's episode, I'm going to be uh, giving an overview of my E39 M5. We'll do a walk around to check out for any uh, cosmetic imperfections on it. Uh, we'll look in the interior, which actually uh, needs a lot of work. And if you watch my first video on this car, I actually bought this car from someone completely not prepared uh, to sell it the day I bought it and using it as a daily driver. So there's definitely bunch of crap in here uh, that needs to get cleaned out. Uh, but anyways, we'll go over the interior, see what it needs as far as interior restoration, and then we'll get up on the quick jacks and we'll give it a mechanical look around. Uh, fingers crossed, hopefully it won't be too bad. I know there's a few things I've already noticed uh, in the few months that I've had it uh, that's gonna be neat to address mechanically. Uh, unfortunately, it took like four and a half months to get the title for this car because uh, the state I bought it from, Missouri, I guess is a title hold state and it was just an utter nightmare, but finally I got the title, so I guess that's all that matters, and now I can enjoy the car. Uh, but you know, if you watch my channel for any amount of time, you know you like, you know I like my vehicles to be absolutely perfect. Uh, so anything I find wrong, uh, I'm gonna correct with it. But hopefully, there's nothing that will break the bank too bad. So with that, let's get right to it. So if you've watched my first video, you know the uh, spec is uh, Le Mans blue over the silver stone uh, sport interior. Uh, the paint is actually in pretty good condition. Uh, the previous owner did tell me that there was uh, some body work that's been done to it. Um, the hood reportedly was repainted due to rock chips. And I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's like ever so slight amount of fish eyes on it when it was redone. Uh, so that's kind of unfortunate, but that being said, I'm planning on using this car, or I bought this car with the intention of driving it. So I wanted a higher, mi higher mileage one. This one's 156,000 miles. Uh, I wanna be able to drive it and not feel precious about it, especially with the values of these going absolutely insane. Um, I guess like all the kind of air dam canard things, I guess I'll show it more when I get it up on the quick checks but those are all cracked at like all four wheels. But overall, like it's actually really good um, condition and it's probably a good thing that it's been repainted because there are a few rock chips but they're actually like not very many so I'll have to get some touch-up paint for these few uh, that I've found. Not sure I'm uh, crazy about the uh, yellow uh, fog lights so looks like that's just a film I can peel off. <laughs> the wheels are actually in pretty good condition. Uh, I know a lot of these either in item fives the stock wheels uh, kind of just fade away over time. Uh, but these ones are actually pretty good, not really even worth uh, having refinished. So body, yeah, I mean, I, I really haven't found much in the way of blemishes on it at all. I think it was actually probably a good thing that both the bumpers were, have been repainted because uh, yeah, they're in good condition. Oh, and the car has, I don't know if I mentioned it in the first video or not, but the car has Dyna exhaust, which sounds amazing. So pretty happy about that. Then on the interior front, keep in mind, like I said, I did buy this from someone that was using it as a daily driver the day I bought it. But the interior is actually, I mean, there's a few things, but for the most part, it's in really good condition. Like someone definitely took good care of the leather. And this is from the, you know, heyday of BMW where it was actually really good quality. Someone left me a French fry and a dime, so that's good. Uh, we'll see later what other sort of treasures are in here. Um, the back, I guess, as you would expect, is pretty good. It's kind of cool that it has all the sunshades. The back one actually works too. Although, I don't really know if you need the sunshades with the tint that this car has on. I was actually kind of worried that it might not pass inspection here in Texas because I honestly don't even know what the laws are, but they didn't even say anything to me. So, it's kind of cool that it has like a change pocket like that. Uh, so one area that definitely is gonna need some attention. I noticed that this is come detached, so I'll have to uh, fix that. And the cup holder's broken, luckily they left me the uh, piece for it. So I'll see what I can do with that. Some epoxy and super glue should be able to correct that. Sorry, I stopped and restarted the video since there was a truck that was uh, pretty loud. Um, but yeah, I need to fix the uh, cup holders. I love this trim that's in this car. Um, I'm not sure what it's called. I have to, once I get the window sticker, I'll look at it and see what it is. Cause it's 
it's like a little bit darker than like normal brushed aluminum and I like it. It really goes well with this interior. Uh, the screen has a little bit like of an area that I guess it won't turn on now, but that has like a whatever dead pixels or whatever. So I don't know. I don't really care. Uh, previous owner told me the sunroof is hit or miss. So I'm probably never going to try that. We'll see how bored I get if I decide to tackle that as far as fixing it or not. Um, where I live in Texas, you can't even really use the sunroof. So I'll pop the hood, see if there's any treasures in the glove box too. So on the passenger side, it looks like they left me Fig Newton. It's crazy to see that this car was used in the way that it was. There's really nothing good in here. I was hoping that the window sticker would be in there, but the previous owner did tell me that he has like all dealer records for this car all the way up to like 130,000 miles. So hopefully when he sends me all that, it'll have the... Uh... One thing I think is uh, pretty cool about the trunk of the E39 is, well, first off, it's massive, but I thought it was cool that they, they had this in there to because uh, BMW knows their audience. I don't play golf, but I do play hockey, so we'll see. I know I can definitely fit my hockey bag back here, but it'll be cool if I could get my hockey stick in here too without folding down the seats, which I honestly don't even know if they fold down on this. I'm gonna guess they don't, just from looking at it. Uh, but yeah, Let's see if there's anything worth mentioning under here. Um, some sort of blanket and bulbs and the battery. It's kind of cool, the battery box has an M logo on it. There it is, the S62 engine. Uh, I'm definitely gonna enjoy detailing the engine bay because all this plastic is so kind of old and worn out. So I think that will restore really nicely. Um, but yeah, I already looked under here. I just haven't got it up in the air yet. Um, I just like, there's a little bit of oil leak from the uh, oil fill housing there. It looks like the, Valve cover is like maybe weeping just a little bit, but not terrible yet. Um, I have noticed when driving it, there is quite a big like petroleum smell coming through the vents, which I think is power steering. Cause if you look over here, you can see it's just, it's power steering has been leaking for a, a long time. Cause all those hoses are completely soaked. And then down here under this power steering pump, uh, you can see it's just completely soaked in oil. So hopefully fingers crossed, it's just the power steering pump and not an oil pan gasket or something. But yeah, that's pretty much all I found when I looked around over here is very slight weepage from the valve covers. And then I need to replace all of those power steering lines. Oh, and then one other thing I've noticed since driving this car is the windshield washers aren't working. So I'm gonna have to uh, troubleshoot that. Hope oh, maybe it's just low, but probably more probable that either the tank is leaking or the pump is bad. But either way, it shouldn't be a hard job. Hey guys, so it's been probably like three weeks since I started this video, but come to find out when I went to get my car up on the air, I found out that the quick jacks I had were too short for the E39 M5, so I had to buy the quick jack extensions. They got lost the first time they were shipped to me. Uh, luckily, Home Depot.com was pretty awesome, and uh, they gave me a new set of like 30% off because they lost them. Uh, but anyways, got the quick jack extensions now, so go ahead and uh, get under the car and uh, see what I find under there. Fingers crossed, uh, nothing too bad. All right, so one thing I know first off, I'm definitely gonna have to dig in and find the source of my power steering leak. I mean, obviously those flexible hoses up above are leaking, but I just need to make sure that's the uh, only thing that's leaking and it's not coming from the pump or anything. And I tested this oil here that's on the motor mount and you can see it's red, so that's all power steering fluid, which is good, which means there's no, well, at least there's not any, uh, there might be an oil leak too, but definitely just power steering leak. And then steering and suspension was, uh, everything's not like terrible. Um, obviously stuff is not brand new, but like I already felt everything. And I mean, there's a little bit of play in that thrust arm. So that probably needs replaced, but we'll see if I can see the boot. Yeah, it's torn. So that needs replaced. Sure, if you can see that on the video. So, looks like I need thrust arms, but everything else actually feels pretty tight. Surprised the sway bar and legs are good. They actually look fairly new. Uh, oh. Ball joints look pretty good. 
brakes possibly are pretty worn. I guess I'll look from the other side. I forgot to look at that. Um, I'm gonna take the dust shield down to make sure, um, find the source of the power steering leak, but actually it looks pretty dry from the oil pan. <laughs> Coming over here, let's look at this thrust arm. Yeah. I would say they probably, eh, there's not nearly as much play in that one as the other one, so. I'm not gonna rush out to do those, but they definitely uh, will need addressed. And I'm guessing the brakes are pretty worn because I can't even see the pad, so we'll look on the other side. Um, don't see any oil coming out of the shocks, so that's good. I actually saw like markings on the springs, like maybe they had been uh, replaced recently. Um, I'll probably remove this shield too. Uh, looks like maybe a little bit coming from the bell housing, possibly. Um, everything looks pretty clean under here, no rust. I was just driving the car, so we've got water coming in from the AC drain. It's the uh, dining short shifter up there. All right, let's go to the back side. Back here, everything looks pretty good. Looks like this axle seal over here might just have like a very, very small weep from it. Nothing too crazy. Actually, it looks like they have, uh, I forget, yeah, like spherical, I don't know what this is, like a solid diff bushing or something. It's not usually my style, so maybe I'll change that. I don't know. I haven't actually really noticed it being too harsh. Um, looks like the sway bar and links are pretty new back here. The sway bar bushings look good. Um, the dining exhaust. Um, everything looks pretty good back here too. I mean, it's not like stuff is brand new, but I don't see anything like super alarming. So that's good. It's kind of weird that sticker is so pristine on this diff. I wonder if it was replaced at some point along the car's life. Um, but yeah, pretty happy. A few small things to address. So uh, removing the belly pan yielded a few more things. Um, it does look like most of this oil on the side of the engine, which is a shit ton. It's all power steering fluid. And uh, the way you can determine that is if you have a clean white paper towel or whatever, and then you can see it's red. Um, that place had a little bit of uh, engine oil in it too, but I was scan uh, filling it before and you can see it's like, all right on the towel vice over here where that's engine oil. It's more yellow than red. Um, this this leak over here, I'm, I don't know. It might be this like lower pan gasket, but I can't actually see anywhere. I guess right here at this bolt hole. So yeah, I guess I'll go home, ahead and replace this lower pan gasket. Um, the upper one looks actually pretty dry. So that's lucky because that one you would have to drop the subframe for. Uh, so I guess this one, it could be the, um, drain pan too, but I'll go ahead and take this lower, uh, pan off, I guess, and replace this gasket as well as it looks like it's just the soft power steering lines that are leaking kind of the hard one there, like it has oil on it, but I think it's cause, um, the soft one or whatever has leaked on it. So I'll go ahead and replace those two soft power steering lines, which are the cheaper ones, luckily. I'll get a new power steering reservoir, or try and clean all this up. Uh, I'll replace this lower pan gasket, and then I'm gonna clean everything up and make sure it's dry. There's a little bit of oil on the transmission too, but I think it's just the drain plug is leaking, so I have a new drain plug and crush washer. So hopefully that will shear that up. Um, I mean, it's not terrible, but for 157,000 miles, uh, or I guess I should say it's not good, but for 157,000 miles, it's not, Terrible, in my opinion. So, a little bit of work to do, but that's all right. Keep me busy. Hopefully the parts aren't too expensive. I definitely need to order some more of the belly pan bolts. You know, I'm just gonna give everything a good clean in there when I'm done replacing those few things to see if there are any other leaks. I can try and identify them. Okay, guys, so that's a wrap on this episode. Uh, not a clean bill of health, but hopefully nothing too terribly uh, bad to do or too expensive. Uh, so some stuff that I definitely found that are gonna need addressed. I need to get the two flexible power steering hoses uh, that come from the reservoir to the suction of the pump and the return from the cooler to the reservoir. Um, so I need those two flexible ones. It looks like the hard ones, like the hard um, 
it's metal pipes and like neoprene hard uh, rubber. Those ones don't like to be uh, leaking. So I'm gonna start with the flexible ones first, clean everything up, and then see see what it does. Uh, I did notice I didn't show this on video that the passenger side spray bar and like one of the boots was torn uh, on that that I didn't notice uh, my first run around. Uh, so I'll go ahead and order a pair from spray bar and links. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and replace the power steering reservoir while I have the hoses off and everything during it since, um, yeah, the filter is actually in the power steering reservoir. So I'll replace that to, uh, yeah, whatever, replace the filter. Uh, it's like a $30 for the power steering reservoir, so not terribly bad. Uh, thrust arms, they're not, they're like right on the edge of like, hey, they're gonna be need to be done pretty soon. I think it's safe to drive the car right now until I get it done. But I think replacing those will probably tighten the front end up a little bit more because there's just a tiny bit of play in those. So I'll go ahead and replace the thrust arms. Uh, motor mounts, they're kind of the same way as the thrust arms. It's like, they're not completely shot, but they're ending or nearing the end of their life. So I might as well just go ahead and while you're in there, replace those. Uh, the oil pan gasket, it's, I guess, lucky for me, the only the lower pan is leaking, not the upper one because the upper one you'd have to drop the subframe in order to do that. And then uh, that's kind of the, while you're in there, you might as well do rod bearings if you get to that point. Um, I would like to get 5,000 miles of oil through the car and get a Blackstone sample before I um, do rod bearings because they're not, they're not really known for failing the F62, so I'll just monitor the help of them via the Blackstone analysis. So uh, I'll go ahead and replace that lower belly pan. I'll also give me a chance to inspect to make sure there's no plastic material in there from the timing chain guides. Previous owner told me that they were done, but I haven't seen a record for it yet. So um, they'll give me a good chance to get in there and make sure there's no plastic bits in the lower row pen. I don't think I have any issues with my timing chain guides because it's like really quiet on the cold start. Uh, but anyways, they'll give me an opportunity to inspect for that and then replace that gasket. Honestly, I don't even know if it's a gasket. I can't see a gasket there. It kind of looks like it's just RTV, so it might be a pretty cheap fix. Um, just to get kind of some of those bolt holes are just weeping a little bit. Um, I'm missing some belly pan bolts, so I'll order some of those. And then, um, I don't, I'm not sure if I mentioned this before or whatever, but the windshield washers aren't working, so I'll troubleshoot that. Um, yeah, I don't daily drive the car, so that one's not too terrible, although we're nearing bug season here in Texas, so definitely gonna need those uh, coming up. Uh, so. Yeah, eventually I'll get around to troubleshooting, but I'll go ahead and order all these parts. Hopefully it's not too terribly expensive. Unfortunately, I know the thrust arms are kind of pricey, which I don't quite understand, um, but whatever, it is what it is. Go ahead and order the thrust arms, get those changed up, um, do this other maintenance, replace all the fluids and filters, and it's pretty good, you know? I mean, like obviously it's kind of like a bummer when you find stuff that's wrong with a used car and UI, but again, it is a used 22 year old car with 156,000 miles. Um, I didn't get a pre-purchase inspection. I bought the car on a whim. So I get what I, I get what I uh, deserve, I guess, but I'm still thinking pretty good position on this car as uh, Le Mans blue E39s are doing very well right now. Um, so get all this stuff fixed up, enjoy it for a while. Um, and then when my S54 touring is done, I'll probably pass it on to someone else. All right, I uh, hope you guys uh, liked this episode. And as always, if you really liked it, then go ahead and like and subscribe and stay tuned for next time. Thank you for watching, bye.